Hey friends, welcome back to Data Analytics Talks. Let's focus on data profiling today. Data profiling and data quality are closely associated. So we make sure data maintains quality by profiling data. So it has some process. We follow some best practices and there are both open source as well as commercial tools to manage data profiling. So what is data profiling? Every data governance or data, data professional should understand about data profiling. Data profiling is a process of reviewing source data, understanding structures, content and interrelationship and identifying potential problems for data projects. Uh, so basically the first activity is reviewing the source data. So basically in data warehouses or data migration project, we will have numerous data sources where the data is flowing from. Then understand the structure of the data. Then more than that, you have to look into the content of the data. Then the interrelationship between tables and you identify potential for data projects. So this is the basically the definition of a data profiling. To repeat that, data profiling is a process of reviewing source data, understanding structure, content and interrelationship and identifying potential for data projects. After every data profiling, we will have a score. We have a number of processed records and failed records and past records and we get the statistics about the completeness, timeliness, validity, then we have the consistency and usefulness. Data profiling is a crucial part of data warehouses and business intelligence projects. Why? Because it can uncover data quality issues in data sources and we can decide what needs to be corrected in the ETL process. Secondly, it is very crucial for data conversion and migration projects. Data profiling can identify data quality issues which we can handle in script and data integration tools while copying data from source to the target. So it can uncover new requirement for the target systems. So what are the activities that we can do? It can identify data quality issues. We can fix the issues while we are migrating and we can also uncover new requirement for the target system. And finally, this is very important for source systems data quality project. So data profiling can highlight data which suffers from serious or numerous quality issues and the source of issues, example, user input, errors in interface, data corruption. So in major data profiling project, we can identify the value distribution, we can check the quality, we can identify the value, the, pat the pattern and uh, check the data quality consistency. Then we will check data completeness check. And finally we get a summary of the statistics. So the value distribution, data quality check, value pattern, data consistency check and data completeness check. So it is important to understand the activities involved in any data profiling. So first of all, it is collecting the descriptive statistics like minimum, maximum, count and sum. Then collecting data types, length and recurring patterns. 
then tagging data with keywords, descriptions or categories, the performing data quality assessment, risk of performing joints in the data. Then we have discovering metadata and assessing its accuracy. And finally, is identify distributions, key candidates, foreign keys, candidates, functional dependencies, embedded value dependencies, and performing intertable analysis. So a lot of activities are being handled during data profiling. So moving on, we will see the types of data profiling. So first is structural discovery. What is the structural discovery? So validating that data is consistent and formatted correctly and performing mathematical checks on the data like sum, minimum, maximum. Structural discovery helps understand how well data is structured. For example, what percentage of phone number does not have correct number of digits? That is a structure verification. And secondly, content discovery. So looking into the individual data records to discover errors. Content discovery identifies which specific row in a table contains problems. Every table has multiple records. So if you maintain the list of the customers, you need to understand which specific row in a table contains problems. Maybe the problem comes here, right? So identifying which row has problem. Then third is relationship discovery. How parts of the data are interrelated. For example, key relationship between database tables, references between cells or tables in a spreadsheet. Understanding relationship is crucial to reusing data. Later data sources should be united into one or imported in a way that preserves important relationship. So identifying a, a the relationship between tables in a database, then references between cells or tables in spreadsheet, all these part of the relationship discovery. So we have structural discovery, content discovery and relationship discovery in the data profile. Then what all things we will evaluate during a data profiling? First of all, we will do the completeness check. So what data is missing or unusable? And conformity check, what data is stored in a non-standard format? Consistency check, what data value give conflicting information? Accuracy check, what data is incorrect or out of date? Duplication, what data records or attributes are repeated? Integrity, which data is missing or not referenced. So we have completeness check, conformity check, consistency check, accuracy check, duplication check, integrity check. It's very, very interesting activity, right? Then data profiling and data quality analysis. Now let's look into the best practices. So distinct count and percent, which identifies natural keys, distinct values in each column that can help process insert and updates is handy for tables without a disk. So distinct count and percentage. Then we have the percent of zero blank null value. Identify missing or unknown data. It helps ETL architects set up appropriate default values. So if you identify the percentage of zero, blank or null values, it helps the architect to come up with the default value required for the data. Then we have the minimum, maximum, average, string length. It helps select appropriate data types and sizes in target database. 
enable setting column width just wide enough for the data to improve performance so these are some of the best practices followed in data profiling and data quality analysis okay moving on let's see some of the advanced data profiling techniques first of all key integrity it ensures keys are always present in the data using zero blank null analysis also helps identify orphan keys which are problematic for etl and feature analysis so what is the technique is a zero blank null analysis then second one is a cardinality checks relationship like one to one one to many many to many between related data sets this helps bi tools perform inner and outer joins correctly finally we have the pattern and frequency distribution it checks if data fields are formatted correctly for example if emails are in an invalid format extremely important for data fields used to for outbound communication email phone addresses and so on so pattern and frequency distribution check then okay. let's look into some of the open source tools we have the quadient data cleaner which is an open source which focuses on data quality data profiling and data wrangling detect and merge duplicates then boolean analysis complete analysis character set distribution and uh, date gap analysis and reference and data matching so that is the features of quadient data cleaner profiler tool it's an open source then we have the aggregate profiler where we have the data profiling filtering and governance similarity check data enrichment real time alerting for data issues and changes basket analysis with bubble chart validation then single customer view dummy data creation metadata discovery anomaly discovery and data cleansing tools and which also has feature for hadoop integration so something called aggregate profiler then finally there is something called talent open studio it's a free open source tool which we use for profiling the data so it has a customizable data assessment a pattern library a analytics with graphical charts fraud pattern detection column set analysis advanced matching time column correlation so look at the open source tools that can be used for profiling the data we also have commercial tools data profiling with informatica then we have oracle enterprise data quality profiling tool we have sas data flex So these are some of the tools we can explore more tools just remember a few of them then of course this is a time for cloud and uh, you will have a lot of uh, data profiling tools cloud based uh, data profiling data pipelines maybe informatica is one of them so it needs to help you discover define apply and measure and monitor so we have during the discovery phase of course you will find out the data discovery data profiling data inventories process inventories credit analysis capability assessment all part of discovery and we have the define stage where we have the business glossary creation data classification data relationship reference data business rules data governance policies other dependent policies and key performance indicators then in the third stage we apply automated rules manual rules end to end workflows with society collaboration and above all 
there should be provision for monitoring and measuring the effectiveness by operational dashboards, reactive operational DQ audits, dashboard monitoring audits, data lineage analysis, program performance, business value and ROI. So there is a collaboration between business and developer for the success of data profiling and data quality, right? So I hope you are able to understand the basics of data profiling, at least to answer what is data profiling, where it is relevant, why it is relevant, what are the activities, what are the best practices, what are some of the tools. Thank you for watching.